In today's show, we're looking ahead to Wednesday, where there's 13 games on. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you to you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Let's talk games. There are a lot on. Now, you're not going to have... I'm still going to do the streams, but with 13 games on, you're probably not going to be able to stream many blokes. But let's talk about what we're watching for in the 13 games that we do have on Wednesday, starting with the Nets and the Magic. James Harden. Um obviously has not been the best start to the season. We want that field goal percentage to come up. We want the usage to come up. I don't know why he's so afraid of shooting at the moment. Maybe because they're not going in. Let's see if he can get a little bit more aggressive. And then LaMarcus Aldridge, who seems to be almost going good game, bad game, good game, bad game. He was really good last game. So can we get a good game two in a row? I don't know. He's been very intriguing as a stream option, um, but the inconsistency rules him out of 12-team must roster status. While for the Magic, it's about Cole Anthony. He's been dominating. Can he keep this level of efficiency up? That's the thing I want to watch. The minutes and the usage, I think, will stay fine for now and the next month to two months. But it's the efficiency that's really going to determine you know, how I view him moving forward. And then also, um, Franz Wagner. Who's been a little bit down the last couple. I wouldn't say that he is a must roster in a 10-team format. In a 12, I would. But it's trending a little bit down. So let's let's watch that and see where that uh, what direction that goes. Um, the Wizards and the Cavs is the next game. I want to watch Montrez Harrell, who's been putting up some really good efficiency numbers, especially his free throw has been awesome, which in the past he has struggled with. So that's an encouraging sign to see him improve so much from there. Um, and then watching how the minutes go with him and Dan Gafford. And then also Spencer Dinwiddie, who started out on fire. I put him on the Sal High Show and he's dropped way off since then. I do think there is a happy medium between first week and a half and second week and a half for Dinwiddie. Let's see where he fits. I'm most most interested in what his usage looks like here. Well, for the Cavs, there is no Colin Sexton. So will Isaac Okoro play? And what will his role be? How interested are we in um, in what he is going to do? That's that's going to be, I think, the key question there. Yeah, I, I don't think Okoro is any sort of fantasy option, but how they utilize him if he plays will be interesting. And then Dylan Windler, who's shooting the three ball really well. And with the absence of Sexton and Markinen and Love, and maybe a Coro, where Windler fits in, and can he be an interesting sort of guy for deeper leagues? Watching him you know, start to finally, after two years, start to play at a decent level is uh, is encouraging, at least. The next game we look at is the Pistons and the Rockets. Um, Cade Cunningham, we want to watch. His usage has been very, very high. The efficiency hasn't been there, but if the efficiency comes up to even below average, because it's at the moment horrible, but if it even comes to below average, his numbers are going to be fantastic. The assists are a bit low. I'd like them to go up, but it, I'm more intrigued by how his usage looks. And I also want to watch whatever the hell is going on with Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Um, Stewart obviously has been disappointing. The minutes have been low. Otherwise, like his numbers in terms of you know, field goal percentage and rebounds and blocks, it's been all right. It's just playing like four or five fewer minutes than we would have hoped for. So let's hope that we can get a little bit more out of him. And then for the Rockets, Jalen Green has been atrocious in terms of efficiency, and he's not supplementing it with much else. I'd like to see one good game from him. He's had that way. He had that one game against the Celtics. It was really good. And then he struggled in most of them. So let's see a few more flashes. And Daniel Tice has strung together two really strong games. I think he's looking more 14 team than 12. But if he puts another big one up, then maybe he can be a back end 12 team league sort uh, sort of player. The next game we look at is the Raptors. Taking on the Celtics, I want to watch the big sneeze, Precious Achua, with Ken Birch out. Officially listed as doubtful, but he's going to be out. 
Um, Achua is going to have you know, a pretty decent run of minutes off the bench. He played like 27 last game with Siakam getting 25. Let's see how that runs. If Siakam moves up with his minutes restriction, where does Achua fit in and what numbers does he put up? And then also Scotty Barnes, who saw his usage plummet with Siakam back. He only played 31 minutes with some foul trouble, but like 12 or 13% usage was really low. So let's see if they go back to including him as a higher usage guy or if he's going to be stuck in a behind Van Vliet and an OB Siakam type role and even Gary Trent, which would obviously have a pretty significant impact on his overall fantasy value. For the Celtics, Marcus Smart has been you know, really bad in terms of shooting. He's still producing value in other categories, but I'd like to see at least one game where shots go in. And then the Rock DJ, Robbie Williams, who's been, I guess, somewhat disappointing, especially with his blocks. I'd like to, and Al Horford's been getting a ton of those. Can Williams, in his bigger minutes, larger minutes, be able to provide us some more blocks? Because it hasn't quite been, um, unfortunately, where we've wanted it. The next game we're looking at is the Bucks and the Knicks. Bobby Portis put up a good game on uh, Tuesday. He'll be starting again, I would imagine, with Brooke Lopez likely out. And he does have 12-team value, and he should be on the 12-team roster. While we're always watching Grace and Allen, especially with the absences on this team, he does have 12-team value. I don't believe it will continue long-term. So I'm always watching to see if he has a big game. Maybe you can trade him for a more um, more stable top 100 player. Well, for the Knicks, both Mitch Robinson and Nerlens Noel are both listed as questionable. So we want to see what they do and then what that means for Taj Gibson. Deeper leagues, Jericho Sims is going to be your guy and Obi Toppin. But can Taj Gibson be a short-term 12-team league guy if Noel and Robinson miss games? We also want to watch Kemba Walker, who's been bad and then good and then back to bad. Where is he going to fit? Can we see a better game from Kemba? And more importantly, how do the minutes look split between him and Derek Rose? Guys, Thanksgiving is coming up. And that means food. It means family. But it also means lots of calories. So instead of your standard dessert, you know, like a slice of pie, which is 300 plus calories at least, why don't you try Bilt Bar for Thanksgiving dessert? Bilt Bar, just 130 calories, low carb, low sugar, low fat, and high protein bars. They are covered in 100% real chocolate. And you can be the hero of the day, bringing Bilt Bars for dessert, coming with boxes under your arm and throwing them out. Here you go, Rusty. Have a coconut bar instead of your coconut cream pie. Here, Aunt Sue, why don't you have a raspberry Bilt Bar? Little Johnny, you'd love a blueberry muffin um, Bilt Bar. It sounds awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, mate. Yeah, there you go. What a hero. Bilt Bars are the new holiday dessert tradition that you can start in your family. And they're going to have so many new flavors chucking out throughout the month of November. I said they've got to have something pumpkin, right? They do. There is a pumpkin flavor over there on Built Bar. So go to Built.com, use our promo code LOCKED15, and you can save 15% off your order of Built Bar. So head to Built.com and use that promo code LOCKED15. Get yourself some Thanksgiving desserts, perhaps. All right. Mavericks. Bulls. Timmy Hardaway Jr., He's been playing at a higher level the last three to four games. Minutes are up. He's doing a few more things apart from scoring. I want to see if they roll him more in that 32-minute role versus the 30-minute role. And then Luka Doncic, who has really... Like, he's just not where he needs to be. He's not a top 30 player so far in fantasy this year. I'm not convinced he gets to be a top 12 guy in category leagues. Someone said, maybe I'll do that as a Watford. Maybe I will. Um, Free throws still suck. His uh, field goal percentage is down. His assist numbers are down. His usage is, it's all right, but like everything's down. And I'd like to see him do a little bit more. Well, for the Bulls, Ayo Desumnu played really well last game. I, I don't fully buy that as any sort of long-term thing, even for deeper leagues, but let's watch what Desumnu can do. Is there a chance he could take over at any point from Javonte Green? I doubt it. But defensively, I thought he did all right, and he scored well. And then we also want to watch Nikola Vucevic. It's Vucevic. It's Vucevic. Vucevic who has seen his usage plummet and his efficiency go absolutely in the toilet. And I think some of that goes hand in hand. So if the shots do start falling in, maybe we see a bit of a usage spike. But at the moment, he's not a top 50 player. I don't think he's getting back to the top 20. I'm not sure he gets back to the top 30. But I do want to watch to see if at least he gets a little bit more confidence in his shot because it's been trash so far. The next game we look at is the Thunder and the Pelicans. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, the Joe Rogan experience. What is he going to do? Will they start him? Will it be Derek Favors? Can he find a consistent role? At this point, the answer to that is no. But if he can play 25 minutes a night, then there is some 12-team, maybe more 14-team league appeal. And then Darius Baisley, who is playing better. I'm not saying he's playing particularly well, but he's playing, I would say, average to above average. In points leagues, I believe he's a 12-team league guy. I don't think he's there in category leagues, but I just want to watch to see if we can get a little bit of reliability in the shooting stroke from Baze. 
For the Pelicans, we don't know whether Brandon Ingram or Herbalife Jones is going to play. So Josh the Hitman Hart is going to have some value. Now, if those two do play, what does Hart's game look like? I think he's a short-term 12-team league ad, but not convinced he remains. And then Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who's been atrocious with his shooting, like really bad. He's taking a lot of shots. He's playing a lot of minutes, which is all the things you want for fantasy. We just want him to start hitting some of those shots. We knew he would take a lot of shots. We knew he would miss a lot, but he's probably missing a little bit more than we expected, unfortunately. The Hornets and the Grizzlies. Terry Rozier finally got some shots to fall last game. Um, So that was awesome. We got that going. Um, Will he continue that? Will he be able to be efficient again? I I don't know. That's the first game he's really been efficient. And with PJ Washington Jr. out, we see Mason Plumlee put up some better lines. I don't think Plumlee is going to remain must roster and he's going to have some severe severe deficiencies with his free throw percentage. But that will work for some teams, teams, especially while PJ is out. For the Grizzlies, they reintroduced um, Brandon Clark to the rotation last game. Their whole rotation is very intriguing. Is Dylan Brooks going to be back? It sounds like he is. Who moves to the bench? Melton and Bain. Does Tillman play? Does Adams play in more than 20 minutes? There are a lot of rotation decisions that Taylor Jenkins is going to make. And we want to see how that looks. And then also, where does Kyle Anderson fit in? Does Brooks coming back limit him to 23 minutes? Will they eliminate Adams almost in- completely and push Anderson back to 28? There's a lot of decisions that need to be made and a lot of fantasy-relevant decisions that need to be made. The Kings and the Spurs. Buddy Heald, will he start again? Tyrese Halliburton is questionable with a back issue and Terrence Davis is also questionable with his ankle. Heald struggled in that game against the Suns, as a lot of those Kings players did, but he had been playing pretty well before that. I expect a bounce back there. And then also, uh, we want to watch Darren Fox. Last game. And the last few games, he started to look a lot better. Is that a real thing? Will he be able to continue along that level? I don't know. I hope so. But we want to watch it. Well, for the Spurs, as I just choke, um, Jakob Pertl is out again. So Thad Young and Drew Eubanks, we're going to get that boost. Let's watch what Young's role looks like. And let's also pay some attention to my mate, Derek White. Maximum Derek. He struggled a lot this year. The shooting percentages are absolutely in the toilet and the usage has not spiked as much as I thought it would. I thought it would. Let's hope we get a little bit more efficiency here out of Derek White. Um, the next game we look at is the Pacers and the Nuggets. We assume Malcolm Brogdon's returning. He's currently questionable. But you know how he goes and how that fits alongside Chris Duarte, we really interesting. Will Duarte play 34 again? Will he play like 30, 31? How does Justin Holiday fit into that mix? And Jeremy Lamb. And then Miles Turner, who was, of course, part of the I Request uh, elaboration portion of yesterday's show. He's playing really well. Can Carlo keep him over 30 minutes? It would be awesome if he could. We don't have confirmation for the Nuggets, or you know, for the Nuggets, about Nikola Jokic's status. We don't know if he's going to be suspended. We also don't know whether Michael Porter Jr. is going to play. Actually, that's not true. We do. He is out. So Jeff Green probably gets another start. Or they might go with Doja. But I want to watch both Green and Doja. Also, Jermichael Green, especially if Jokic does get ruled out. There are lots of opportunities for guys to step up into larger roles. And Green and Doja are probably going to get first crack at that. The next game we take a look at is the Blazers and the Suns. Christian James McCullum has seen his efficiency really, really drop. I think there's a chance it can get back. And he's been playing at a really high usage with good numbers across the board. But his free throws are down under 70 over the last two weeks. I need to see that go back up. I also want to see whether Bob Covington has actually turned it around. He had been struggling so much to begin the year, and let's hope that he gets it going. Well, for the Suns, Mikhail Bridges had also struggled in terms of generating defensive stats. He had two steals, two blocks last game. Let's hope that that is a, uh, a sign that it's going to move forward in a positive manner. And Cam Johnson, I just is he, is he good? That's what I want to... Can he be an NBA player, a rotation player who can potentially be a starter? At this point, he's definitely not a starter, and as a rotation guy, he's just, I don't know, he's just really struggling at this point. And I'd like to pay a little bit of attention to him because, you know, Drake Crowder is not the most reliable starter there for the Suns. The last, well, second last game of the day is the Warriors. They're hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. <clears throat> I expect Minnesota to start Patrick Beverly again next to D'Angelo Russell. I think Beverly is a 12-team league guy, but we want to watch how that works with Beverly's minutes and Beasley's minutes and Akogi's and Jared Vanderbilt. And how much do they run with the Reed-Towns combination? Because they did that quite a bit in the game against the Grizzlies, and that did limit what Vanderbilt could do. If Reed pushed to 24 a night, like he would be a 12-team league guy. But I think that 
Kogi, Prince, Vanderbilt, all those guys are going to be sort of in and out of rotation roles all season, and it's probably going to hamper their value. Well, for the Warriors, Jordan pulls on a hot streak. He's shooting remarkably well from two-point range, not really from three. He can improve there, but he's doing a few other things. He's getting to the line. He's getting some assists. Some steals are okay. He's been putting up some good numbers, so let's watch him. And then watch the other guy, Andrew Wiggins, who's struggling. Minutes are down for Wigo. Efficiency is terrible. Usage isn't particularly good. He's looking towards being a 12-team drop. I don't think he's there yet, but he is moving in that direction, which is pretty interesting. The last game of the day is the um, Miami Heat traveling to take on the Lakers. Jimmy Butler is a top 10 player this year, and that's not even on the back of like three steals a game. Is it like 2.1 at the moment? He's doing it on high scoring, high efficiency, great free throws, good assists. He's been really good. And then also watch Duncan Robinson. Now, you know he's a drop in my mind in 12-team leagues, and in points leagues, he should never have been drafted in standards. Um, can you do anything to change my mind? Probably not. Well, for the Lakers, Russell Westbrook, we know how bad he's been efficiency-wise, turnover-wise, but he can put up counting stats in the big numbers, points, rebounds, assists, and I imagine he does that again with everyone still out. And then Kent Bazemore, who has been starting, but has not been playing well. I want to see how he looks. Like He might get a boost in minutes because now Austin Reeves and Rajon Rondo are both questionable. And if they miss, he's going to have to get more minutes. But I think that when we get Horton Tucker and Nunn coming back and Allington working his way into more minutes, I'm not sure where Bazemore is going to fit in this rotation because he has not been uh, particularly good so far this season. I think that would be a fair... um, a fair decision or a fair uh, evaluation of his uh, of his value. All right, guys, basketball season. We are well and truly rolling. Football season, we're midway through the year, and the best place for you to place your bets on those sports is at BetOnline with their new updated website. So go to that new updated desktop site or use your mobile device and sign up today. And if you use our code LOCKEDON, you get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, and right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Take advantage of all of the great offers that they have right now for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline is where the game starts. So let's have a look now at some stream options. Again, I don't think you're going to be able to stream really in any situation with 13 games. But maybe you're lucky. These are some guys to add who are rostered in under 50% of advanced leagues. Drew Eubanks, Bruce Brown, Dorian Finney-Smith, Darius Baisley, Derek Favors, Daniel Tice, Cody Martin, Patrick Beverly, I think he's a must-roster guy anyway, and Damian Lee. Those guys all have some value. And for deeper formats, we're looking at Brown and Lee, who are under 10% rostered, Jermichael Green, with the likelihood that Jokic is suspended, Dwight Powell, Javante Green, George Hill, Jeff Green, PJ Dozier, and Brandon Clark. And lastly, for points leagues, these are guys rostered under 50% of leagues. Baisley, Achua, Eubanks, Josh Hart, Thad Young, Daniel Tice, Jeff Green, PJ Doja, and Derek Favors. Guys, that will do it for us today. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below on YouTube. Subscribe. Tell your friends, guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.